Greetings everyone, it's Dave Herman, alias Daz the Artist at 144 uh, on October 11th, 2020 in the afternoon, working from Olympia, Washington, and experimenting on his new, uh, these concepts I'm going to do where I hopefully will write and illustrate sort of a high-level thinking book using puppets maybe. So I've come up with this kind of, uh, I'm ex still experimenting with my texture brushes, so here's something I've created that I didn't want to show how I made this. Everyone knows how to make textures. I got my own way, I'm experimenting now. And you can see I'm using dry media and acrylics in the uh, Affinity Designer program. So my brush today came out of the dry media. You can see the... Uh, variables of opacity, hardness, and flow at the top. And just to reiterate, when I think about these things, since I was a traditional airbrush artist um, in the analog world, opacity represents the paint, flow represents the air, and hardness represents how far I pulled back on the lever. So, I, you know, when you put paint in your little cup, you stick it in your airbrush, uh, as soon as you push down, air is coming through. As you pull back, it mixes with the paint, and the harder you push down, the more uh, the air pushes the paint out in a bigger spray and all that. So uh, you'll figure out how to translate it. There's a big enough clue, though. If you can't do it after that, I don't know. All right, next, I'm going to go to drawing some kind of spontaneous puppet theme. This is a practice on a 12 by 9 Horizontal setup at 300 dpi. It's 4K resolution. And let's go into the colors. And I'm going to start with the red outline. And uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do. But I want to do some kind of cool creatures or birds or faces or things, you know, in my puppet world. So let's say I, I, um, I've done a hot air balloon. I've done couple of faces and stuff. Uh, maybe I'll make an environment. So let's start with an environment of some type. And I'm looking at my light spots, dark spots, gray areas, and things like that. So up here I kind of see a nice tree on the left. So I'm bringing this around. And I look at the brush and I think, well, I want a little less opacity. So I can use the slider on the right hand side, see that? And this will change the opacity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that brush strokes. So edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo. to just hit these things right with the pencil point. Okay, so now it's gone. So we're going to go on the right and we're going to change the transparency to 50%. And let's draw some new strokes and see what we get on the new level, of course. So go back to brush. And now you can see that's a good little trick without playing with your paint and stuff so much as you can change your opacity. So we're building an environment here, right? I have no idea what I'm going to come up with. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So I'm kind of thinking of a, a building there, maybe a dome-like building. And get a structure. This is going to be the puppet world, though. They're going to be on sticks. This is part of my my creativity. Of course, I'm showing everybody what I'm doing, so everybody will be copying this before I even create the book. But, hey, whatever. It's good practice for me to talk it out, think it out out loud, because I'm in total self-isolation like everybody else. And uh, there's no one to chat about this with, so chatting with you. Thanks for tuning in. 
to see how I work. Now, again, I've got to slide these sliders. And that's something you got to do each time you pick a paint, as you see, or it goes back to the hundred. So, uh, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You got to, you got to actually think about all these things. Thinking, who ever wanted us to think about all this stuff? <laughs> Art is so complex. It's like being an engineer. I'm telling you, there's so many variables in a painting, especially digital. I mean, there's a lot to think about. If you're not thinking about it, you're lucky. That's all I gotta say. There's too much to think about. Okay, so now I've got this building started. Structure. Looks almost like a ship. But I'm gonna fool you, and I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. Let's see here. And you know, remember this is gonna be on a stick, because this is my theme of the puppet world. Uh, is I will draw a book on sticks, like paper mache puppets. Oh, wow, now it's looking like a tea kettle to me. So, excellent, excellent, excellent. That's a good idea. So let's do the ma a master tea kettle. And uh, let's see how I want to do this. I can kind of keep it on the screen. Let me think about this here. <laughs> New design. Let me get some black going here. I just want to chuck some of that in to fade back some of this green. And if you go to a new level, you can really crush your old paint level. Just kind of, and I like to sometimes keep that smudgy look. So I'll do that. If I go to 100%, of course, I can kibosh right over just certain areas, break it up. And if you're breaking up an area like that and you see you've knocked out all your nice uh, juicy soft whites and things like that, well then just take some white and go back over it, you know. But you have all these options, right? Okay. Back to my tea kettle. So I'm going to use a purple now. And I'm going to start thinking out my own custom design to this tea kettle on a stick. I really think I've come up with something for me. But if I don't get my book out super fast, of course, somebody else will steal the idea. <laughs> That's the way the world is. They're not looking, they're not being original. They're gleaning everything else somebody else creates. Which is okay. You know, one thing leads to another, and that's how I ended up becoming a digital artist, practicing, copying, emulating, trying to learn how someone did something, trying to exactly copy it, and so on, and figuring out what brushes or what way I would get there, which may not be exactly the way they got there. But nonetheless, I got there. And then that, of course, through the last... Uh, six and a half years of practice has led me to develop uh, more of a thinking process and a more of a spontaneous way of doing it and less inhibited ways and stuff because I'm not earning my living from this by any means. I don't make any money at all. I just practice and hope that one day to be commissioned by a miracle uh, to do something I want to do. Like anyone gave me a theme or something to create, I would gladly create it my own way. It may not be this, it may be another way, whatever, once I have the theme. But certainly it would have to be for a income. <laughs> Nobody's going to get six and a half years of my experimentation and the prior 40 years 50 years of uh, being a professional artist and lithographer and stained glass artist and commercial artist and advertising executive and all that stuff. Uh, history, which led me to go from one thing to another 
as I'm still doing at my ripe old age, um, without pay. So, I mean, it's an insult to an artist not to pay him. You wouldn't ask a brain surgeon to work on you for free. And you can't ask artists to work for free. Uh, because life and death doesn't depend on art, you have this competition where the whole world over, they just beat artists up, make cheap websites and so on, and a person gets the prize very inexpensively, which, you know, to each their own, but uh, not only do you get the creativity of the artist, you get their inventiveness. So, uh, I am for hire. by the right person for the right project. However, during COVID, I doubt if that's gonna happen anyways either. With a trillion artists looking for work. <laughs> so I just put this up for free. I share with the world. They share with me. I get to go to Art Station as a pro look at everyone's artwork, they get to look at mine, and I want to be part of that community and share, and so I do. I still think in the long run, it helps me to grow, it helps the art station to grow as a community, and uh, I'd rather have an open mindset than a closed, highly competitive one that... Uh, kind of kiboshes everything. I just don't want anyone to claim that they've invented stuff that I have any more than I would what they have. So, don't do that. And the way I put colors together now is, you know, the result of my thinking of all this stuff and study. And it would be a perfect children's book. It could be a book on science. It could be anything that I do with this. I'm going to put some philosophy down and make a book. But uh, in the interim, I still want to, I'm playing with this a little bit. I haven't quite got the feedback yet. Uh, there's no negative feedback, of course, so that's always a good thing. Nobody's freaking out that uh, this offends them. In the age of everybody complaining just to complain so that they validate their existence. Don't care what you think about what I say, people. <laughs> I don't exist for you to attack me. So, man up. You know what I mean? Man up. Do the work. And uh, I did run, when I was younger, um, departments and companies and stuff. Um, not super giant budgets or anything. Companies that uh, generated, say, $10 million in sales, had 60 employees. I would have a lot of input in head of sales or um, taking someone from a bankruptcy or something like that when I was younger. But the whole time I was an artist. It's just that... Feeding a family came first. <laughs> Feeding a family came first. Now that I'm old and uh, on my own, I can be that artist. And I'm, I'm allowing myself to be that individual. Even though my friends might say, well, what are you going to do with your life? It's like, I lived it. <laughs> I did my life. I'm trying to get to the point of graceful retirement where I generate enough just to eat, you know? So, the COVID thing has really kiboshed everybody and our mind and our trust and it's uncertain. I, I don't want to ever be the cause of somebody getting COVID or um, laying a guilt on somebody or any of that. I want to be the good steward and uh, 
So as a tattoo artist, my shop is closed currently as we anticipate the second wave. And who knows? Really, who knows? You know? It's easy to be a Monday night quarterback. We have a... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. Okay. But anyways, after someone releases the facts, it's always easy for other people to say this and that. But they did not do the original thought. They did not do the original thinking. They did not do anything except criticize at the end. And criticizing at the end, to me, that's not a skill. Anybody can do that. Anyone can find fault with the hard work and labor of somebody else that they're trying to put something forward instead of doing constructive criticism where they say, um, gosh, I like what you're doing. Have you ever considered doing this? Um, it's just a thought. You know, I'm not telling you what to do, but I, I'd like to just put this out there. I, I have watched what you did, and maybe this would be uh, also something to include in the kit bag. You know, there's ways to share information without putting someone down or going to the Internet and just blasting something out of context. The Internet's full of out-of-context information. The most popular hosts just copy each other. You know, whoever's successful on the Internet with some podcast, everyone, if you look a week later, has a podcast about it. They don't do any research. They just sit home and they wait till somebody does something and try to spread it because they have a lar larger audience and claim it as their own. But if you drill down the timestamps of things, clearly you can see where the truth lies. Mm, that's not working. Had a different idea about that. Okay, so let me do some tightening. Uh, let me see here. The lid. I want some kind of cool oriental... Well, because I studied martial arts uh, the greater part of my life, even though I don't practice anymore, uh, and studied advertising and studied stained glass, all things that I did uh, to earn income and to learn um, tattooing, and now finally into the digital art world. Um, I don't remember that slider bar. The slider bar is better because then I get that kind of a texture still. I can even go less, I'm thinking, and uh, achieve what I'm thinking. I'm going to go up a layer. Like I say, when you talk, I've said this before in my other videos, when talking and drawing, it's very difficult to pay attention to every step that you normally would when you're not talking. On the other hand, talking helps you focus. Like it helps me focus uh, intently. And so then I, I'm going to continue to do this like I'm learning a new martial art. Uh, you know, how to learn the counter to 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 the technique. I want to be able to think, walk, chew gum, draw, paint, and everything at the same time. <laughs> Now I've created my own kind of a Daz style uh, potential for children's books and advertising again and stuff. Uh, this is it. I'm going to be the puppet uh, puppet guy for a while. And yes, somebody probably can take what I just invented and claim it as their own. I'm sure they're going to. There's no stopping that because people aren't going to be original. They're going to glean everything they can. So. This is very cool. See, I'm trying to make original forms. So if you've done some pottery, if you've done some sculpture, if you've done art, you know, you have this mixed bag of, of things that you can 
incorporate into your visuals of your art. And if you've drawn animal, vegetable, mineral kingdom, you know, this is kind of like a serpentine shape, right? Like the front end is pointing towards me, then it's kind of like an S-shaped bar and the back end points away. So just so you say that's not correct, <laughs> it is possible if you think like I do. So it's a serpentine kind of a bar. Understand that? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> but it didn't make sense till I explained it to you. Now, explaining all my art in a, takes away from the person's self-exploration, and they may come up with an explanation better than mine for my art. <laughs> you know, my eye sees it one, two, ten, fifteen different ways, but yours might see it even more so different ways. and come up with something as wondrous, equally as wondrous, equally as magical, equally as valid. So, very, very interesting. And I can push stuff back, I can bring stuff forward, I can do what I want, because it's my party, as they say. Let's kind of go like that. It's my party. I can do what I want to. Yeah. It's my party. I can do what I want to. It's my party. I can do what I want to. Who knows what the back of the other one looks like, right? It can be like something very cool. It's my party. And I'll do what I want to. Yeah. Sort of uh, suggesting motion, movement, non-static, optical illusion next of a paper mache puppet. Because we're going to make this a puppet. I'm going to show you in a second. If I put the bar down at the bottom, scroll to this layer, and add in the stick that holds my paper mache up. I'm really on to something now. I'm on to paper mache puppets by Daz. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Could be a story. I'm telling you, I can tell a story with this. I would love to illustrate the panels of a book. Now, lots of thinking goes into this. Even the cool opening of my spout on my teapot. And I take two dimensions, make them three dimensions, make them four dimensional in a multiverse of creativity. Doing my optical illusions, doing all the things that I've come up with myself and translate visually into my art. You know, I 
can make this teapot spout be a dragon. I can make anything be anything I want, because that's the freedom I have. I shall put a couple eyes on there, maybe further back. Something. Something, something. And a nose. And a head. And it's alive. Probably has ears. This is how my imagination works. It's very idyllic. Very mystical. But to get your head to this point, you gotta do a lot of stuff in life. You gotta live a lot. You gotta just, you know, people say, what drugs are you on? I'm not on any drugs, man. <laughs> this is art. Art is a lifelong study of stuff. I mean, a lifelong study of stuff. And everything I do may not please even one single person, but it's my evolution and I'm working on it. So please enjoy. Allow me to be slightly sarcastic when I want to. Because I'm not thinking of you. <laughs> you don't mean anything to me. What do you think about that? Huh? Can I just live my life without having to think about the other 7.5 billion people in each one of their own idiosyncrasies? It's enough to think about mine. So I'm not busy thinking about yours. It's a waste of time for a person to have to frame every thought they make or verbally speak because it completely shuts down communication. And I am 100% offended by the generation of the me, me, me's that just sit there waiting to tell you how you've offended them. Grow up. Mature. Be adults. You only get the money that you get because of uh, political situations and um, the way business works. You know, you get, if a company's billing by the hour, it wants as many people making as much high wages as it can assigned to a task to bill by the hour to charge the client. But you can go to school and learn whatever you want. So you're in the real world you had your own company. I don't care if it's even selling just, you know, iced tea on a corner. You will have to figure out how to make your own supply chain, how to do your own uh, economic uh, short trip, shortcuts and things to produce the best product you can at the lowest price. But today they think about producing the least good product at the most price. It's completely backwards. It's not the way my generation grew up, we wanted the best product at the least expensive price. And we wanted everyone to profit down the line so that they could all make a living and continue making the, the product. See, now I've got this cool cat going on. The teapot of the cat. Let's go up a layer and let's plop a few more in there to keep me occupied. You may hear people cutting their lawns outside or whatever they're doing. I don't know. It's pouring rain, but somebody's got a machine running somewhere. It must be a leaf blower. People are funny what they do, including myself on any given day. So this is a magic teapot now. Teapot of the cat. Hmm. Who is this cat? What is going on here? I wonder. Let's see. We may arch the back, maybe in the handle. Mm -hmm. So you see how this has evolved. This is like a caterpillar cat almost. Just don't know what it is. It's the nozzle of the pot, and it's ancient. 
Let's say it's ancient and it's mystical and it's a story about a. I'm not going to make the story up yet because I might want to write it. All right. Ooh la la, that's so cool. That is so cool. I'm not a big fan of all those whiskers on the whisker side there to the right, so I'm going to knock that back. Definitely want to knock that back. Let's go to full black and do some knocking back. Uh, I think that was way distracting. And I might just put some something subtle there. There we go. That was a little too prominent for me. And a little bit longer, it's cool. Let's do some of that. And the turning of the the spout towards the viewer is kind of intriguing. Make that a little wider. And I think I'm going to make a leg in the background. Let's see. Let's let's do this. We'll make like a knee. It goes back. The paw comes forward to here. See how things work, and, and it's the torque that makes it interesting. So, uh, turn things the way that they don't normally turn, but make them believable. I mean, it's, it's doable. Mm -hmm. Just a suggestion. It's a puppet now. It doesn't have to be photorealistic. It's paper mache. It's, it's something... Something very crafty I've come up with. I love this. I think I definitely got a way for me to write a book. And illustrate one. So there. If those are front paws, I could have a back paw against the teapot. So let's go up a layer. get into the 50% range of stuff. See how I kind of just, I kind of just do it. Make it happen. Even go up lighter with less pigment. See, because as you make it lighter, what it does is it breaks up the solid nature of the pigment. And puts more spaces in between the texture of the brush. Oh, it's like a cat's tail. Oh my gosh, my brain. It took so long for me to, you know, see, I have to stare at stuff and just, I'm so slow sometimes, gosh. I bet you guys noticed this before me, didn't you? There it is, look, a cat. Oh, there it is, so cool. So Cheshire cat-like kind of uh, creation. Let's put this lid in front in a multiverse kind of way. And uh, let me put a little ledge on there. 
Again, this is how I work. A little hot spot there might be cool. Oh yeah. Now, even some green. Let's go up another layer and let's add a bunch of layers. Come back down to there. I'm not sure how this will work on everything, but I'm discovering how it works. I'm putting it together for the first time into this magical array of stuff. And, you know, once you have it in your mind, you can go over and draw it again. I could paint it again with a little bit of uh, forethought. But this is, this is a good way of noodling out... Um, the idea of a theme and prototyping my idea figuring out how best to make the cat that came from the tea a tea cat the tea cat, that's what I'm going to call this. Oh. I'll tell you, this is, this is what excites me more about drawing than anything else is when I come up with these original concepts just on the fly by diligently working away and just freestyling, free-flowing very hard to do when you talk to other people. Mind you. Mind you. It's not that easy. Said the man. Let's get this way up. Yeah, there's machines working out there. I don't know if the city is working out on the front or what. I'm not going outside to look, though. It's kind of dismal out there. This is what? Another reason you should become an artist. <laughs> All right, I've got that start going. Okay, now. Up a layer to the black. Working uh, the cat's body. I do want to get rid of some stuff, so I'm going to go 100% dark where it meets the tea kettle lid. I'm going to come through there. I'm going to separate the lid a little more with the dark black. Okay. I'm going to further outline my cat just a little. Uh, bring the leg in. Some swifty, crafty shapes. I don't want to be super explicit. I do want to suggest enough, and that looks pretty cool. Of course, not everything is turned the right way and all that. That's what makes it art. You understand? That's the art of it. Some slashes here. Do I like those? No, that texture is distracting, so we edit those out. Let me show you how to back that out. This is how I experiment, though, uh, live. I don't do any editing to these things. You can see how I think. And how I arrive sometimes at the final piece, but the evolution that it goes through to get there. So I want this brighter just down the center. And I don't have to follow the color rules. Understand? I don't have to do everything off the color wheel. Because that isn't the most interesting look, always. That just shows that you, yes, you have the training to do that. But your art looks like everybody else's art. So, I can brighten my own way. I can do my own thing. <laughs> the rainbow is so important. To conceal the rainbow. 
Yes. Teal is an excellent color. That's too strong. Add it. Undo that stroke. There we go. Just like that. And a white highlighter too, and then I can draw the next object. It's my paper mache now. That's pretty distracting. But again, that's not a good one. So we're going to undo that. We have freedom to do that. This is part of the creative process that you cannot do in the analog world. But in the digital world, you have complete freedom to do that. So let's go heavy on the edges with a purple, maybe. Just a little bit on this edge in the back, like that. Along the bottom, like that. I'm going to shape this attachment better. Bring that together. A little bit of black, <coughs> excuse me. When I think of these wonderful shapes, I see concealed in there. Almost looks like an ear, right? The teapot that could hear. <laughs> My imagination knows no bounds. No bounds. Just challenge me. Just challenge me. Give me the theme and I will give you the dream. You want to do this and don't want it to be too muddy, but I also want it to make sense. So, in an effort to do that, I'm doing this. I want it to be intent. Very carefully tracing, drawing. It's tricky digitally. Very tricky. And the multiverse stuff is the part that, you know, it's a negative, a positive, an inverse, a, a come towards you, go away from you. A depression becomes an actual line of the form of the object. You know, things are going on that make it exciting and make it my style. That's how I roll. Sometimes I'm thinking just just how much detail do I want? You know, just how explicit. So let's just fix a little bit of those eyes, just a little bit where they meet the head. Like that. Mm -hmm. And I could have the little pink nose. Let me see how that will work there, maybe like so. Does it work? Hmm. You know what? In this case, I'm going to leave that out. 
I think I like that double orange. <coughs> Something very peculiar about the whole thing that's working. Can't put my finger on it. It's just interesting. foot before I put the cut in. Let's put the cup in. Gotta suggest stuff there. Okay. A touch of orange, yellow, I don't know. Everything does not have to make sense in the way that they usually do, but they still got to be. So while it's not realistic art, it's representational art again. You know, it represents enough where you can tell what it is without me being photorealistic and drawing something that you just go, oh yeah, that's a perfectly drawn cup. <laughs> no, we want something else going on. All right. Now. Let's do a save. Plus there's something about things being not perfect, kind of distorted, kind of uh, doesn't make sense to your mind. Otherwise, it's just, you know, your mind just glosses over it and goes to the next thing. So now let's have a cup puppet. So we'll kind of do like this, go up a level. 50% or so density, you gotta remember that. You gotta think of everything. Thinking, thinking. Baba Louie. Thinking, thinking. Oh yeah. talking at the moment just so I can think about really the densities and the magic of it all. It's hard for me to, it really is hard for me to paint honestly and just try and think of all the metrics. I mean there's so many things I'm thinking about. The density, the color, the thickness, the texture, the, the pressure, the this, the that, the other thing. You just can't, it's just not doable. And that's why people edit their videos. Because there's so much going on when you're actually drawing and thinking about the video and all its metrics. If you're a one person shop or one person doing this like I am, there's no help. I don't have someone fielding stuff or doing stuff to assist me just working myself my own way trying to be creative expose you to my thinking process and uh, technically do the stuff I talk about uh, you know Takes imagination. Lots of it. It's 
to make floating things. Just how does it work? Where do I get the... See, it's almost like, you know, I could paint like say that Cezanne in this for sure. I'm just telling you. <laughs> you could do anything you want. Oh my God, I have so many ideas. But I uh, just tackle it one thing at a time. <laughs> Because I'm trying to have a multiverse brain about this and not a traditional three-dimensional space brain. Understand? I'm trying to make my brain think different. Not the easiest thing to do. In other words, yes, you go through all the traditional steps, you know, line, shading, uh, create a form, color, have a sense of gravity, have a sense of uh, things moving closer, moving further away, diminishing sizes, everything, and still talk. It's just, it's just crazy. Because I want everything to look different. I don't want each drawing to be the same as the last drawing. Of course not. But this is a style I'm working on now. And I think I'm getting it. Carving it out, so to speak, for me. Being selfish, trying to figure out my way. Trying to use this COVID time to find a blessed way out of it. For me, it would be, you know, somebody funding me, you know, a GoFundMe or something where, or a promoter who knew how to get my let me draw stuff like this make t-shirts and make uh, children's books and make a movie and animation and the whole thing I mean I can invent just from the day I wake from the minute I wake up to the minute I go to sleep I'm an inventor kind of guy but I'm terrible at promoting myself I'm just terrible at that help I need help promoting myself especially in the age where you just turn on the computer and seven million people have copied the last seven million and how do you stand out and you know you got all the tricks you got all the tricks to get yourself before the right audience and how to get money and how to bond with people and all that I'm just not good at it I'm an artist I'm sorry I just like to create that's what I mean when I say I'm just an artist I am a creative guy and creativity is my thing. I do it my way. Yes, now nah, it looks transparent -y, drinky, bubbly. And it's got a touch of retro, you know, it's got a touch of retro. Touch of the retro. What could it be? Well, the story would tell us what it is. Hmm. Well, we now have any curtains coming down. Let me do something with some. Uh, I got an idea here. Got an idea. Okay, so up here, we'll go to another layer. I'm just going to keep making layers, because if I wanted to edit this, I could go back and do it. Not that I'm going to ever, but I always have to practice that thought process, just in case. In case I had a real project, you know, a client that wanted things edited and changed. Although, what I give you is going to be cool as you can see because I'm not only limited by my imagination and there's no limits there. <laughs> there's no limits the guy can think forever I can imagine so much stuff that it's it's ridiculous no shortage there and I can take direction 
and I can brainstorm with people. Look how fast we just did that, that modification, which now puts like an, an interesting feeling like there's a shop or something. So we could even have a counter. Let's get a nice tanned counter going here. Mm. Do something like that. That since I, or the curtain is, I'm gonna do a like a just a little bit in front of that stick. Come across. As I build the stage of this puppet play, <laughs> what is going on? He says. Welcome to Puppet, Puppetville. Yes, I'm on to something. I'm really on to something now, and I'm just getting my chops for it. But it's my own thing. I do it my way. It's my own thing. I'm happy to play. It's my own thing. I do it my way. Okay, there's a good counter. And the edge is kind of rough. The stage is kind of crude. Let's see here. Let's maybe have this go away from the viewer. There's some optical stuff where things come to the viewer and go away from the viewer. And I gotta mix that play together, the interplay of that. That's part of that. Part of the multiverse kind of thing is where what you think is coming close is going further away and so on. See, you're watching it happen live. Mind you, no prep, no idea before I sat down where I was going with this. You've watched me create from scratch a complete different idea uh, and make edits as I go along. You know, making edits as I go along. So see, there's a lot happening there, right? And so then we put some highlights. Start to make this real. The representational becomes the sensational. And uh, before you know it, I have like a counter with wrought iron work and some stuff going on. And now some little things on that corner would be cool, and that would be an interesting, interesting thing. So let's uh, maybe food, you know, something. A loaf of bread. You can see a whole restaurant menu made this way by me. <laughs> yes, 
and, and vegetables and fruit and stuff, you know. No limit, no limit to these things, folks. resolution of stuff what's going on what's going on folks what's going on yeah so these are variations on themes as I begin to imagine what I'm coming up with I don't know the foods and the things and the imaginary world and At the same time, you're thinking chrome yellow, lemon yellow, this color, Naples yellow, uh, you know, all the things that goes through the artist's head. Just about done, folks. I think they're very crafty. Great video, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. I'm a sign. This is again. Uh, see, these things don't have to be worked on ad infinitum. They're my practice sessions, and they actually work out cool as art. So let's sign it and call it a wrap. Thank you for watching. I have crafted my own puppet world art. Edit, save as, let's see, export. Let's do a, yeah, let's do a JPEG that, let's see. Let's do 1200. Restaurant. Okay. I'm going to call that a wrap.